We're talking home insurance today. Not the sexiest topic, but certainly a popular one, especially for those of you who are looking to get a slice of the Colorado lifestyle. Hey everyone, it's Allison Wall with Live South Denver, your real estate strategist and realtor for the South Denver area. The more of Colorado you want in your home, the trees, the views, the wild open spaces with grass and no one behind you, the more at risk your home looks to the insurance company for fires. So like this beautiful space around me and behind me, the insurance companies look at it and go, eh, well, we might want to charge you more. So today we're going to talk about what it looks like for risk factors, costs, things of that sort when it comes to getting a home that has a little bit more of those favored Colorado elements. So let me first say that the only way you're going to know for sure what it's going to cost you to get your home insured is to ask the insurance provider you're going to work with. We absolutely have people that you can chat with. You can talk to farmers, state farms, and then we have a great broker team who can look across all sorts of different providers. One of the things we suggest is that you start talking to these folks as you're looking, not once you've gone under contract. They are such a great resource and helpful part of the process, particularly when you're looking for homes on land, homes with trees, and looking at homes that might cost you a little more money to insure. So you can factor that really well into your budget. And also that you don't get attached to one that the insurance company might come back and say, uh, that's gonna cost three times as much to insure than we ever expected. In case you're ooing and awing over where I am, I am in Evergreen today. I have a client who is under contract on an absolutely gorgeous home. So it made sense to talk about this because it was a hot topic for this client as well as several others that I'm working with. So what are some of the factors that the insurance company is looking at when they're talking about insuring a home? Number one, is it in a wooded area? They care so much about that because embers here with fires and the high winds jump from tree to tree. And then of course your roof is going to be the next factor in that. They land on the house and that's what spreads the fire. So the construction of your home matters a lot as well. Is it a log cabin versus being a brick built home or a stick built home covered with hardy board cement siding? What is the structure of your roof? Is it a real shake shingle, which is made of wood, or is it a cement or metal or architectural shingle? They're gonna look at how far your home is from a fire hydrant or a cistern, how far it is from a fire station. They care about the type of fire department in your area. Do you have a real fire department or a volunteer fire department? And then back to those trees, they care very much about how close the trees are to the home. They're going to talk a lot about what they call defensible space. Is your community a firewise community? The minimum they really want in terms of space between your home and trees is 30 feet. And it's not just the trees, it's the grasses they want mowed down and cut back. That's not always the minimum standard. My insurance team told me about one of the insurance companies that they were quoting a client for that required 100 feet of cutback. The trees, everything had to be cut back 100 feet from the home. So it really can be very individualized. And last, and this one's kind of a tricky one, is that the insurers want the home viewable from a road or a neighbor. And here's the thing, you're thinking, I want a home with a Colorado vibe, some trees, some privacy, no neighbor in the back. And the insurer is saying, I wanna be able to see your house. The reason is they don't want the home to be a total loss. They don't want a fire to start and no one to notice and the home just goes up in flames and it never has a chance for being stopped. So there is a balance in how remote the house can be without the insurance rates going up. Pricing out the home insurance doesn't have to be stressful. You get time during the contract period once you've made an offer on a home to price it out. But like I said at the beginning, I absolutely encourage talking to your insurance team ahead of time so that you aren't deeply attached to a property that they can already tell you is either going to be impossible to insure or really expensive to insure and just doesn't fit into your budget. But don't worry because like I said, you do get dates in the contract to evaluate the insurance costs, talk to your insurer, get all the details. And if it gets too expensive and doesn't fit, you have termination dates and you can get your money back because of the insurance premium being just more than you ever thought it would be. 
Those carriers we all know, like State Farm and Travelers and Farmers and Nationwide and Allstate, only take standard risk properties. So if you do find a home that you absolutely love, hits all the notes for that Colorado vibe that you really want, and it isn't a standard risk home, then you're gonna have to go to the excess and surplus market with your insurance provider. What's that gonna do? Well, probably double your insurance premium. And that sticker shock is why we're talking about this. I hope all this has been helpful and if you want a little slice of all that you've seen around me today, more trees, some gorgeous views, lots of greenery, some amazing homes, mostly custom, and a little closer to the mountains, then I am always happy to chat. And we can talk details like insurance and septic and well and boilers and all the fun things that go along with that too. Just reach out. And hey, I will see y'all next week.